Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss this particular numerical question based on k-means clustering. Okay. Now, how this particular k-means clustering works? Okay. So suppose I have this six uh, data points. For example, six fruits are there. Okay. Six fruits are there in a basket, and I need to classify these six fruits. Right. Classify means, for example, out of which three are apples. Two are mangoes and one is banana. Okay. Banana, right? So I need to classify these six fruits, right, based on this uh, three different categories clusters, sorry, uh, apples, mangoes, and banana. Okay. So how this K means clustering will do based on the common features, right? Like apple is red, mango is yellow, right? So those fruits are red will belong to one coast cluster. Fruits are yellow will belong to one more clusters. So in this way, we generally uh, form the clusters and we say, okay, this particular point will belong to this particular cluster. Okay. I already provided the nodes for this particular algorithm. You can just refer to it. So that will be enough. Okay. So simple algorithm is there, nothing in it, but, but such type of quotient you can expect in the gate exam. Okay. So here we have eight data points, right? And the initial cluster centers are given to us. So now we need to classify this particular uh, data. We need to group this particular data points, right? So what we need to do? So what we usually do in the k-means clustering? Suppose I have this two-dimensional plane, okay, x and y. So for example, let us take these points only, x and y, okay. And I am plotting this point two comma ten, so it will come uh, somewhere here, right? Two comma five will it will come somewhere here, right? Then 3, 8, 4, 8, 4 will be somewhere here, right? So I'm just randomly classifying this particular this type of point, right? So suppose these are my eight points. Now I need to group these eight points into three clusters centers. So how I will do? So first I will assume any one uh, data point as my cluster center. Let us assume this particular data point for one for one clusters. This particular data point for one clusters and this particular data point for one clusters. All right. Suppose these are the three centroids, right? These three are my three uh, centroids. So how have we come to know that this particular point will belong to which uh, clusters out of one, two, and three? So for that, what I need to do, I need to find out the distance between this data point to this data point, this data point to this data point, this data point to this data point, right? And after finding out the distance of this particular point from all the three centers, centroids then i will select which center is near to me near to means the distance is minimum right if the distance between this particular data point and center is minimum then i will say this point will belong to this particular uh, cluster or center right similarly i will calculate the distance of this particular point from this cluster this cluster this cluster right and based on the minimum distance because it is near to uh, it is closer to me so i will say okay this particular point will belong to this particular cluster right so this is how this k means clustering will work so same concept we are going to apply in this particular question okay now eight points are given three clusters are given to us right so distance function between two points is this one okay so this is simple uh, manhattan distance you can uh, in some question they can also give you uh, consider the distance between two data points as a Euclidean distance, right? So in that case, you need to consider this formula: x1 minus x2 uh, whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Okay. So this formula you have to consider when it is mentioned that the distance function between two points are the Euclidean distance. Okay. Uh, or, or otherwise, any function they can give. Okay. So this formula is given to us. Or otherwise, they can mention use Manhattan distance. So this will be a Manhattan distance. Or you can, or they will mention Euclidean distance, right? Euclidean. So this will be a Euclidean distance. So how to solve such type of problem? So first we need to find out the distance between each point with the centers, right? So distance of this A1 to this A1, A1 to A4, A1 to A7, because these are the initial clusters that we have assumed, right? And we are interested in the first iteration. So first what I will do, I will find out the distance between A1 and all the three centroids. I will find out distance between A2 from all the centroids. I will find out distance between A3 from all the centroids. Okay. By using this particular formula. Now, if I apply this formula, so here I have calculated the distance, right? So if you observe, 
my centroid is 2 comma 10 only and this is a1 only so distance will be zero because it because this data point itself is the centroid right same thing distance between this centroid to this particular point so it will be 2 minus 5 so 3 plus 10 minus 8 that will be 2 so 3 plus 2 5 similarly 1 minus 2 1 because we are taking the uh, mod right so 1 plus 10 minus 2 that is basically 8 so 9 right now once i calculate the distance between this point from all the three centers then i will see from which cluster or from which center the distance is minimum so in this case it is 0 for c1 so i will classify this particular data point to this cluster c1 okay now similarly i will calculate distance for a2 for all the three centers okay so 2 minus 2 uh, 0 10 minus 5 5 right 5 minus 2 3 8 minus 5 3 3 plus 3 6 so distance is 6 so distance between so distance between a2 and cluster number 3 is 2 minus 1 1 5 minus 3 3 so 1 plus 3 that is basically 4 so i have calculated distance of a2 from all the three clusters and which for which clusters my distance is minimum among all those three therefore cluster number 3 because it is 4 right so i will say this particular data point will belong to cluster number 3 right so this process you have to follow for all the data points right here you can see for my last data point distance between a8 to, with all the three clusters right so it is 3 2 10 so now out of this 3 2 10 which one is minimum 2 so this particular data point will belong to this cluster c2 so c2 will be the uh, cluster okay so this is the first iteration this is basically a first iteration okay once we have find out the distance between all the data point and the clusters and we classify them accordingly then what we need to do we need to find out the updated center updated centroid okay or we can say centers and for that what we do we take the mean of those clusters so that's why this k means clustering right it is k means okay it is k means so we need to take the mean for this particular thing right for cluster c1 now how many points are there for cluster c1 only one point is there so i can directly say for a cluster c1 my updated centroid is same only right that is basically 2 comma 10 so c1 is same only now what for c2 for c2 how many data points are there 1 2 3 4 5 right for c2 now what will be my x coordinate for updated c2 for x1 for example so it will be a mean of all the x uh, coordinate of all five data points so for c2 it will be 8 5 7 so x will be 8 plus 5 plus 7 then this 6 plus 4 right so 6 plus 4 right so it is plus divide by 5 because we are taking the mean of it right so 8 plus 5 13 20 26 plus uh, 30 so 30 by 5 basically is 6 right so x1 is 6 what about x y1 so y coordinates now take the y coordinate of all the data points so 4 plus 8 4 plus 8 plus 5 plus 4 plus 9 right so divide by 5 so how many how many how much we are getting well 17 21 30 by 5 again it is 6 right so i can say the updated cluster c2 has a coordinate 6 comma 6 so this will be a c2 for second after first iteration similarly you can find out for c3 for c3 what are the data points uh, only this one and this one right so two data points are there a2 and a7 so simply x coordinate will be 2 plus 1 divided by 2 that will be a 1.5 and y coordinate will be 5 plus 2 right so 5 plus 2 divided by 2 that will be a 3.5 so my c3 will be 1.5 comma 3.5 okay so this is basically a updated cluster after the first iteration okay after the first iteration c1 will be 2 comma 10 c2 will be 6 comma 6 and C3 will be 1.5 comma 3.5. Okay. 
Now we go back to our question and we need to find out the three cluster center after the first iteration. So this will be the answer. C1 2 comma 10, C2 6 comma 6, and C3 1.5 comma 3.5. Okay. So this type of question you can expect in the gate exam. So here I have asked only for first iteration. In the second iteration, what you have to do? You need to repeat the process again. Okay. You need to find out the distance of all the eight data points from all the three clusters. But in the case of second iteration, our these clusters will be different. Okay. In the case of 2 comma 10, it is 2 comma 10 only. But for this 5, 8, it will be a 6 comma 6 for C2. For C3, it will be a 1.5 comma 3.5, right? Now, again, you need to find out the distance of all the 8 data points. Again, you need to classify into different clusters. And again, you need to find out the value of C1, C2, C3, okay? So, this is how K means clustering will work. Okay, so the value you will get from after second iteration of C1, C2, C3, that will be for second iteration. Okay, so in the gate exam, either they will ask for first iteration or second iteration, right? So up to second iteration only, otherwise it will uh, take more time, right? So this will be enough. Okay, so there is one homework question, one homework question for you guys. So find out the uh, three cluster centers, three cluster center. After second iteration, okay. After second iteration, so tell me the updated centroid for C1, C2, and C3, okay? Because we have already calculated for first iteration, second iteration. I, I already told the procedure what we have to do, so you just need to do the calculation, okay? So tell me in the comment section what will be the value of C1, C2, C3 after second iteration. So this type of example you can expect. So, other type of question you can expect that after first iteration, what are the data points classified under C2? So, that will be A3, A4, A5, A6, A8. Or what are the data points classified or what are the data points of cluster C3? So, that will be A2 and A7. So, this type of question also you can expect. But the process is same only, right? So, please remember this important point. I hope you understand the example okay so that will be enough so based on this if, like if you understand whatever i have discussed in this particular tutorial you can solve any question based on ka means algorithm okay only this term will get changed function will get changed first iteration second iteration they will ask for centroid center or they will ask that this particular data point belong to which uh, cluster after second iteration this particular data point will belong to which cluster after second iteration or third iteration or first iteration or what are the data points belong to a cluster C3 after second iteration. So simple example they can ask but the process will be the same in all the cases. Okay. So that's it from this particular tutorial. I hope you understand the concept. Thank you.